I had heard of him, of course, as all hunters had. It was in the age when men still feared dragons. As a boy, he learned the art of hunting, to trap and set lures, to keep him and his sister alive. But then the day came that would change forever the destiny of young Ahab. Facing such a creature, even the bravest of men would have cowered. How Ahab escaped alive, no one knows. His face and body burnt. Some say the white dragon let him live. Others say he lost his mind and his soul that day. It was Ahab's tale that set me to tramp on a perpetual journey and that led me on a rainy, dank night. Coffin's Tavern. Ishmael, isn't it? You can call me that. And the name of your native friend here? Queequeg. His father was a high chief. He's an ambitious soul, descended from unconquerable warriors. It's his face that tells a tale, as if he would dare a thousand devils. That he would. He's never cringed from a fight. He's never had a creditor. Another round. Good men are ye. Now, tell me about yourself. A wanderer. An orphan. Whenever it is a damp, drizzly winter in my soul, I know it's time to get roaming again. Ah, an adventurer. I simply let the floodgates of the wander world swing open my soul. And a poet. Why are you here looking for Ahab? I've heard this is the place to sign on to hunt dragons share in the sale of the Harvest Vitro. We've come to sign on with Ahab. Mm, tis true, lad. The world is lit by dragon oil. 
And this town is the market for all traders. But why Ahab? Why that cursed man? He's the most renowned of all dragon hunters. That he is. That he is, lad. Are you telling me you're a harpooner? Yes, I am. Blasphemy. Ain't it blasphemy, Mr. Starbuck? We're all blasphemers, Mr. Stubb. <laughs> true, true. But to hunt with Ahab, you have to be willing to defy God. Or be the best damn harpooner in the world. You sure you're a harpooner, lad? He's just a fresh-faced pup. And you're just a fat pig who needs to be skinned for grease drippings. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Mr. Flask. Let's see if there's any truth in the lad's boast. A contest? This one will do. What do you think, Mr. Starbuck? Should we see who can pitch a harpoon into that dragon's skull? You're always worth betting on, Mr. Stubb. Let's see how good your aim is, lad. The great white dragon. Ahab's nemesis. To see it is to face death. Nobody lives. Except old Ahab, of course. Mr. Starbuck? Give the lad a harpoon. I have one. <laughs> it's a bit small, isn't it? OK, Mr. Flask. Step aside, lad. Now, there's something you don't see every day, Mr. Stubb. Indeed, Mr. Starbuck. Put it there, lad. Now, tell us, how does this thing work? It sends a harpoon faster and is more... It's just luck. How are you with the knife? Enough! Who the hell is she? The child of the devil himself. Back yet, drunk. This is Ahab's daughter, Rachel. So you're gonna throw against me now? No. But if you wish to sign on to the Pequod, then sign here. Is it Joan I tell you? Quiet. You're an extractor. Do well to remember that. You'll be entitled, as all the crew, to an equal share of the profit. There are plenty of hunters, but not many game enough for dragons. It's a deadly dangerous business. A toast to a hundred dragons full of vitriol. He comes with me. You sure it's safe out here? Believe me, I don't need your protection. We were just leaving anyway. Isn't Ahab's daughter? Or should I say Ahab's whore? 
Who knows what kind of filth you find on the streets these days. We were never good enough to hunt for you, were we, Rachel? Just back away. Tash to go. You were never good enough to clean the shit from our vessel. Stay out of this. Shmuel, look. Need help, old man? It is you who needs salvation. I saw you sign the book. Did you not listen to what I said about signing away your souls? Maybe you haven't got a soul. Let's go. He has a broken mind. You haven't seen the old devil yet, have you? Old devil? Did I not tell you how he'll be dragged to hell and drag all those with him to seek vengeance on the beast? It scourged his soul and his skin forever. What's your name? Elijah. And mark me, lad, only one man will live to tell Ahab's tale. One man only. Ah, the adventurers. So you did turn up. And just in time to help me put the supplies on the pink one. But first, I need a rest. So what's the story with your old friend there? Doesn't play much, does he? Not unless he has to. How long you hunted on this crew? About eight years, and a lot of money. Spent it all day. Married three times. Left them each. I left them all laughing. And longing for me to return. Well, of course I won't. You ever fought this white dragon? Ahab spent his life hunting? The beast is real, lad. Sacred to his people, but it brings death, whether sweet or sad. Killed the whole of Ahab's crew last time he faced it. That's when I signed on. But no, lad. I've never seen it. I hope to God I never do. You better bless this old metal monster now. It's gonna be home for a while. Come on, stop sitting around. Let's get the rest of these supplies on board. 
Our vessel, the Pequod, was a rare, long-seasoned, weather-stained craft. Her decks worn and wrinkled, and its burnt, scorched iron flesh protected us from the fiery breath of dragon foes. A cannibal of craft, tricking herself forth in the chased bones of her enemies. A noble craft, but somehow melancholy. But all noble things are touched with melancholy. And so we march towards forbidden lands and barbarous lairs, all for the dragon vitriol, the sweetest of all oils. And all the lamps that burn round the known world burn as shrines to our glory. The chief mate was Starbuck, an earnest and loyal man prepared to endure, and endure always. It was a wild, watery loneliness in him. A void never filled where a young wife and child had died alone on cold days of disease. Looking into his eyes, you saw the many perils he'd calmly confronted. He knew courage was not a sentiment, and that an utterly fearless man is far more dangerous than a coward. Stubb was the second mate. Happy-go-lucky, neither craven nor valiant. He had converted the jaws of death into an easy chair, presiding over his harpoon crossbow as if the most deadly encounters were but leisurely dinners. The coil for the crossbow was made of dragon entrails. Treated to withstand scorching flames, it was stronger than any rope. And with it, we hooked beasts for the kill. Flask was a base, mean-spirited man with an ignorant soul. He was the extractor, trained in the dangerous art of removing the sacks of vitriol from a dragon's throat. Flask was also our cook, and a poor one at that. Then there was Rachel, always the captain's daughter, locked silent in herself as if Ahab's hold would never be broken. I need to show you something. The world runs on this vitriol. It's pure before we dilute it and sell it at market. If this comes in contact with air, it will explode. But of our supreme lord and dictator, he was yet unseen. All day in his dark cabin, he pored over his maps and charts, filled with the secrets of years of expeditions. Each morning, he would give Rachel the course we were to follow. Since light still ravaged his scarred skin, he could not venture out in daylight unless covered in cloak and mask. Each night, we would assemble in the galley to eat together. Lost? Tell us a tale, Mr. Stubb. You've heard all my stories, Mr. Starbuck. I haven't. Well, I remember my first hunt. With the beautiful buxom bones. <laughs> no, we've all heard those too many times. <laughs> Tell us of dragons you hunted. Tell them about fighting board the Mocha. Before I signed up with Ahab, I was first mate on a vessel called the Mocha. I was young, 
It was before the dragons had retreated into the forest and the lairs. When you first throw at a dragon, lads, it's not like throwing at a painting on a tavern wall. You stand in there, and the weight of your harpoon feels like a hundred acres. Your legs are shaking in their boots. And when you try and breathe, you feel like your lungs are gonna explode. I mate throw him with me, fine man, Whitman. You remember him, Mr. Starbuck? I Burn. In a flash, from the dragon's breath. And as it roasted him, his skin was turning black and pink before my very eyes. And as old Whitman crumpled to his knees, he was screaming for me. Throw, throw, he cried. And with the strength of almighty God, I threw my harpoon at the beast. Hit him right there. Hooked him good. And with a sickening shriek, a final flutter of the beast's wings fell in front of us in a giant heap. And I don't know where it came from, lads. But through his pain, a Whitman looked up to me and smiled. He saw the throw before he died. And that is the story of a dragon hunter. To Whitman. To Whitman. To Whitman! Fine man! Now, lads. Let me tell you the story about the first time with the beauty with the big <laughs> <laughs> Big when she was. Each night after Stubbs' tales, we bedded down, safe in the bowels of the vessel. I began to wonder what strange adventure I'd become entangled in. What void was I trying to fill within myself by this journey? Would my life be spent in endless days of killing? That's when I would hear Ahab walking up and down the upper deck at night, always searching for the dragon that haunted him. And then the day came when Ahab knew it was time to indenture our souls. She'll bring the drink.
stand at the first killing ground. You'll all be rich from this hunt. <laughs> Captain, was it not the white dragon that burnt you, crippled your leg? Aye, Mr. Starbuck, you know too well it was that accursed beast. And I will chase him across every mountain and through hell's flames. That is what we pursue, to track the white dragon till we strike it and it spews black blood. Are you game? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Captain, you also know well that I am game for the jaws of death. But I came to hunt and get rich, not for your vengeance. How many casts of vitriol will your vengeance yield a market? Think not to swerve me. What I dare. I've willed, and what I have willed, I will do. A dumb brute of a beast simply struck you from blind instinct. To seek vengeance on such a creature is blasphemous. Talk not blasphemy to me. I'd strike the sun if it insulted me. Rachel, bring the drink. Drink and swear allegiance, drink. Swear to hunt the white dragon until death. Ah, now drink, Harpooners. Well done. Almost drained. Now, Mr. Starbuck. Rachel, who led us through the snowy tundra to the Dragon Hollows. She had a keen sense, an instinct, for a dragon's terrain. It was my fear I had to somehow control. Fear that freezes, paralyzes your limbs and numbs your brain. I tried to fight it, but I had never faced a dragon.
every Finally smoked out. He loved life. I'm laughing at life. He told me that was the only answer to all that is strange. We hunted together in the wild, desolate lands. It didn't matter to him. He loved the hunt. Sure, he's presiding over dinner with the devil. We're probably all guests at that table, Rachel. I'll man his crossbow. Mr. Starbuck. 
How is the crew? Grieving. Never wants to stop. It's the risk of our peculiar business, Mr. Starbuck. He lived his life as he wanted. Yes, but... You're well acquainted with death. Has your dead wife or daughter ever returned to comfort you? No, Captain. And they won't. So, block out their memory, their weeping, and their last death rattles. I have studied the migration of dragons my entire life. I know the hidden journey as I know the veins in my arm. And we are close. <laughs> well, we could have a full vessel of vitriol and be back to the market before spring. Not until we finish our greater business. He is headed north to the mountains to nest. It is moving faster than it has in other years. It ages as I do. Come here closer, Mr. Starbuck. I'll show you where we have an appointment. You should have thrown sooner. Mr. Stubb. He's right. I should have thrown sooner. He struck the dragon through the heart. That's what Stubb would have wanted you to remember. He doesn't like to drink. Well, he prefers his pipe. Gives him peace in his soul. You've known each other long. Yeah, we traveled the world together. I've seen many things, mysterious and strange, but none like today. And no one like you. Forgive me. But a little too much. So will I ever learn your story? My mother died when I was born. My father was killed when I was eight. Before Starbuck, my father was Ahab's first mate. In the mountains, they came upon the white dragon. Ahab told me it was my father who pitched first. We've got a harpoon right into the beast. Ahab tried to save him. Harpooners are madly cursed. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. Ahab adopted me as his own. He's taken me on every hunt since. Ishmael, you better not let Ahab see you lusting after his daughter. I've had enough of you. I'll kill you! Blast! When you're not looking and your savage friend isn't around, we'll cut you. Then I have something to look forward to. Come, Ishmael. Sleep outside tonight. Good. Touch him. Cut your head off. That's where we'll find it. 
I will strike it. I will strike through his mask. It has me. And be the white dragon agent, or be it principal, I will wreak my hate upon it. This is a companion, a boon. And left in the white dragon skull. I didn't kill it then. I will not fail this time. Captain. It's been too many years. Too many years, and if you're just but chasing... the crew will come with me. They swear their souls away for free grog. As you did, Mr. Starbuck. As you did. Well? Are you with me or against me? You need fear, Starbuck, sir. Let Ahab beware of Ahab. Dear Rachel, I'll give her a new course. So we left the gray, windswept hunting fields to venture into the lands of dragon lairs. We're being followed. Have been for days. That's why we keep post at night. Better to steal vitriol than hunt dragons. You been in these lands before? Several times with Ahab. I'm going to scout ahead. You're coming with me. There are glacial dragons here. And they hunt in dense forests. Starbuck tells me there's poetry in you. I guess I've been mumbling in my sleep. Yeah. Gonna recite me something? We didn't know each other well enough. Yet. Yet? What about you? I have no poetry in my soul. Yes, you do. But how long will you let Ahab's hatred drive you? You have such a way with women. You must admit there is a purity in Ahab's constant aim. No. All I have to admit is, you're a riddle to me. Because I want to avenge my father's death? My father used to say there can be wisdom and sadness. There is also sadness that is madness. Your father? Yes. He killed himself when I was 10. My mother carried on as if she could survive, but there are some wounds you don't recover from. And? After we buried her, my older brother took me in. But his wife despised me. So I stole away with a mining caravan. To line your pockets with gold. I found only empty dreams. Until I found Queequeg. He was the caravan's hunter. Everyone stayed alive off his skills with the spear. He became my teacher. And friend. The world your hunting ground. Yeah. Well, poet, what can you tell me you found in your travels? The putridity of gluttons. 
Rum drinkers. Speculation, cunning, betrayal, murder, seduction. All have result beyond death, as real as before death. Charity and personal force are the only investments worth anything. And he who's been wise will receive interest. Savage felon, judge, farmer, hunter, literate, young, old. It is the same interest that will come round. All will come round, Rachel. some souls that can dive down into the blackest gorges and then soar out of them again, flying above creatures forever stuck on the plains. It was Queequeg and I who had become trapped in the destructive current of Ahab's revenge. and I will plot our final path to the mountain's lair. You have until morning, Rachel. How many? Enough to make you the richest of men. Wyverns. Looks like at least 30 or so. Could be. We only have till morning. Then we have to move on. Why? This is not why we came. We could fill our storage with that herd alone. Ahab's orders are to kill them all.
you kill them all, Rachel? Yes, Captain. Be quick, Mr. Flask. Stop. I, I say stop, Mr. Flask. Captain, we need the vitriol. Hey, there! Tell you, Mr. Starbuck! You did. Get on board. We, we must move. Well, what about the Wyvern vitriol? Uh, too late. We must move now. We must follow it to its lair. What? Quick way? Quick way. It's a sign. I am to die soon. Great dragon has come to tell me. That I am a murderer. I have slaughtered in vain. We can't just leave. Of course we can. It is insane to leave. Captain, maybe we should think I about... You know what we must do, Mr. Starbuck. But it's why we came. It's why we just butchered all those creatures. It was for the vitriol. Are you questioning my order? So we have killed for nothing. There is enough vitriol from that kill for you to be rich for the rest of your life. That is not why we're on this journey. You think I've survived here? After a year, just a slave in toil, and yes, butcher, some money groving oil buyers can beat me down in cheap negotiations. Do you think that is my purpose? You think I dragged my ravished, wasted limbs over these barren lands for longer than you've been alive to care for the squealing of the dead for years? I've subjected myself to the humiliation of returning to that demeaning marketplace, Mitchell, to stay alive for one more year, for one more hunt, so that I can kill the white dragon. I will not be deviated from my purpose. Then I will stop you. How? Without your protector, where is he gone? He's in some kind of trance. He will not save you. I've seen his kind before. They wither in sight when they betray their ancient teachings. And I will not tolerate mutiny. Clasp him in arms, Mr. Starbuck. And chain him to the back. Mr. Flask. Get the chains. Gladly. Captain. Rachel. No. We come this far together. This is the beast to kill your father. It beckons us. It calls us. It knows that we are destined to kill it. Now, get this vessel moving. on this vessel. He 
should have warned me. But I forgive you, Rachel, as I forgave your father. I told you I'd get you. Captured and chained like the B-side hunted. Was it some twisted fate? Some warped predestination that led me to this state of misery? I do not know. But I do know that I hated Ahab. Hated that ungodly old man. You take second watch. And be alert on deck, we're being followed. He hasn't moved since yesterday. And I've seen natives go into a trance like this for days. Ishmael should not have rebelled. He had it coming to him, like Starbuck attacking Ahab. Ahab will bring him back inside. <laughs> the captain will not let him back. It's just, it's just us now, Rachel. Why can't you see that? Ishmael can throw a harpoon, and Ahab will need him. Ishmael, you need to eat. Ahab doesn't want you out here. I don't want you out here. Please, just talk to him. You can come inside, just reason with him. Rachel, he killed Starbuck. Starbuck was going to kill him. No. Why don't you understand? No, you don't understand. This is Ahab's vessel. He acted in self-defense. Rachel, I care about you. I do. If you really do, then come inside and reason with the captain. There is no reasoning with madness.
stealing the vitriol! Ismail can come aboard. He has redeemed himself. And bring me back my harpoon. Yes, sir. Are you staying or leaving us, Weque? Now is the time for you to decide. Decide what? follow you, an old scarred man who chases his fears. Uh, say your peace and leave. We stood in fields of slaughter. I must perish. I have mocked the gods. Gods! <laughs> gods! <laughs> Does the sun move by itself? Is it an errand boy for some benign god up in heaven? Does a single star shine unless lit by some unseen power? How can a small heart beat by itself? How can a puny brain think independent thoughts? In all these years, Quique, you have wondered, as I have wondered, and who has put us to the chase? Where do murderers go, Quique? Where? Damn you! You are driven, I am driven, by the fate of our own will. And so we must all perish. Thank you. Israel, Why are we stopping? This is as far as we can go. The rest will go on foot. You're gonna have to lower and secure the anchors, they're frozen.
Enjoy this. I'll kill you. No one can hear us in this You don't have to protect me, Ishmael. I know. But I want to do this. For you. Followed Ahab climbing towards the White Dragon's lair, towards Caves of Death. Queequeg pressed on with us even though we felt he was trampling on sacred ground, heading ever closer to where he believed he would perish.
I know of another entrance to his lair. All right. Ishmael! I cannot go with you. I understand. Stay here. Wait for you. Soon I'll come back. the roof. We have to ambush him here. Rachel? Rachel? these years telling me the dragon killed my father when it was you <sighs> I thought he'd be dust by now don't you lie to me that's your harpoon in his back he was a coward he deserved to die I cannot I will not accept cowardice so you killed him because he wouldn't be as crazy as you are? Where do murderers go, Ahab? He was running away. He wouldn't face his own... He is... Can't you understand, Rachel? 
That is why I return! It was me. Leave you of your guilt. Let's go. You cannot leave. My life, Queequeg redeemed himself with his gods. Rachel was liberated from Ahab's hold, from the vortex of guilt and revenge. And as old Elijah foretold, only one man lived to tell Ahab's tale. <laughs> 